Look at this matrix A. What's the rank of this matrix? Well, A is pretty much in row echelon form, and in this form, we see that it has three non-zero rows. Thus, the rank of A is three. It's as simple as that. So we'll write the rank of A is equal to three. We're going to go over how to find the rank of all of these matrices in today's video, and we're doing it by inspection, which means we barely have to do any math at all. The idea is that if we just look at the matrix closely, we should be able to figure out the rank in simple examples like these ones. Remember that the rank of a matrix is the number of linearly independent rows that it has, or equivalently, the number of linearly independent columns, because the dimensions of the row space and the column space are the same. One last thing before we move on to matrix B, I said that A is pretty much in row echelon form because it doesn't have leading ones. To get it in row echelon form, we would need to get leading ones, however, that doesn't affect the rank of the matrix, so I'm not really going to worry about that in this video. Even if it doesn't have leading ones, I'm just going to call it row echelon form. We can still figure out the rank. Let's look at matrix B, though. What is the rank of this? Again, the rank is the number of linearly independent rows. In this case, we can see that row 2 is not independent from row 1, because if we subtract two copies of row 1 from row 2, Row 2 would be all zeros. You can see row 2 is twice row 1, so we would just have to subtract two copies of row 1 from row 2, it'd go away, and we'd be left with one non-zero row, and thus the rank of matrix B is 1. There we go. Now we can move on to matrix C. This one looks a little trickier. What is the rank of matrix C? None of the rows are multiples of each other. You can look at the columns too, and they're not multiples of each other either, but look at this. If we add rows 1 and 2, we get 3, which would cancel out the negative 3. We would get 3 plus 3 over here, which is 6, which would cancel out the negative 6, and we'd get 4 plus 3 in column 3 and cancel out that negative 7. So the idea is, hey, if we add rows 1 and 2, we get row 3. So row 3 is not independent of rows 1 and 2. But clearly, rows 1 and 2 are independent of each other. You can't multiply row 1 to get row 2. Thus, the rank of matrix C is 2. Again, the idea there was looking for a linear combination of the rows to create one of the other rows. Since we're able to find that adding row 1 and row 2 gives us a multiple of row 3, row 3 is not linearly independent of those first two rows. Let's move on to matrix D. What's the rank of this guy? It doesn't look like it's in row echelon form, but remember the rank of a matrix is the same as the rank of its transpose. And if we look at its columns, the transpose of D actually would be in row echelon form. The transpose would just be 1, 0, 2, that's column 1, and then 0, 1, 1, that's column 2, and then 0, 0, 3. And the rank of this matrix is is clearly 3 because it's in row echelon form and has 3 non-zero rows. Since the rank of D transpose is 3, the rank of D has to be 3 also. So that's another reason to pay attention to the columns of a matrix, because it might be the transpose is easier to work with for finding the rank, and the rank of that would be the same. Here's matrix E. Again, you could look at the rows, but it has fewer columns than it does rows, so it's actually easier to look at the columns. We can quickly see there's no way to multiply column 1 to get column 2, so they are linearly independent columns, and thus the rank of E is 2, because it has two linearly independent columns. That means the dimension of its column space is 2, and if we were to work out the row echelon form, we would get two non-zero rows. Moving on to matrix F. We could look at the rows, we could look at the columns. What do you think the rank of this guy is? Well, none of the rows here are obviously multiples of each other, but let's think about adding rows 1 and 2 to get row 3. If we multiply row 1 by 2 and then add that to row 2, we would get row 3, right? Because if you double negative 1 and add it to 0, you get negative 2. If you double 0 and add it to negative 1, you get negative 1. And if you double negative 4 and add that to negative 4, you get negative 12. So clearly, row 3 is not independent of the first two rows. However, it's evident the first two rows 
are independent of each other. You can't multiply row 1 by anything to get row 2. Thus, matrix F has two linearly independent rows, and thus its rank, the dimension of its row space, is equal to 2. Here's matrix G. What's the rank of this guy? It's got three rows and two columns, and at a glance, we can see that negative 4 times the first column gives us the second column. Thus, there's only one linearly independent column, and so the rank of G must equal 1. All right, let's move on to matrix H, 3x3 three three matrix here. What is its rank? None of the rows are simple multiples of each other, so we might consider trying to add some of the rows together. Row 1 plus row 2 clearly doesn't give us row 3. Maybe we try negative 2 copies of row 3 and add that to row 2 in order to get this positive 3. It would give us the positive 3, but nothing else would work out. So maybe we start looking at the columns, and then we find something. If we add 3 copies of column 3 to column 1, then we get column 2. We'd have 6 plus 3, which is 9, 0 plus 1, which is 1, and negative 6 plus negative 1, which is negative 7. So column 2 is not linearly independent of the other columns, though it's clear column 1 and column 3 are linearly independent since you can't multiply one to get the other. Thus, the rank of H, let me switch to the appropriate color, the rank of H must equal 2, because it has two linearly independent columns. It's not quite in row echelon form because the rows aren't in the right order. The zero rows should be at the bottom. However, we can see that there are two non-zero rows that are linearly independent of each other, and so the rank of J is 2. If we looked at the columns, you can see that we could multiply column 1 to get columns 2, 4, and 5, but we would then see that columns 1 and 3 are independent, thus again giving us a rank of 2. And there's some practice with finding the rank of a matrix by inspection. You want to look for linearly independent rows, rows that aren't multiples of each other. You want to see if you can add rows together to get another row, because if you can, then that other row is not independent of the others in the matrix. Certainly, if it's in echelon form, then just count the number of non-zero rows. And all of this also applies to the columns. You might want to consider the transpose of the matrix. Make sure you consider adding the columns together or multiplying them by something in order to get one of the other columns. In particular, if your matrix has fewer columns than rows, you might want to start by looking at the columns. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And if you find these linear algebra lessons helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon. Link in the description. It's a huge help. Thanks for watching.